darling. Oh, exhilarated. Yes, New York is wonderful. Who? Bruce Endicott McDonald. Certainly. You tell your young man there was a time when Mr. McDonald proposed to me on the 1st and the 15th of every month for six years. <laughs> she knows him very well, darling. I want Aunt Libby to make a date for me with McDonald anyhow, anywhere. It must be for tomorrow. And this is very important, darling, because it's going to decide when we'll get married. I'm sorry my bank was so unobliging yesterday. You have an interesting proposition. So interesting and so sound that I'm putting in 300,000 of my own. But you didn't tell us about that. I just don't like doing business with people who believe my word has to be backed by collateral. You're very proud. Yes. I don't mean that as a criticism, but doesn't this rule hamper you? It never has, and if it ever does, I still won't compromise. Bruce, if I lose one fish because of your chatter, let them talk, Aunt Libby. Bendig, speaking not for the bank, but for myself, what's your idea with Palmetto? What would yours be if you had just acquired the largest single block of voting stock in a company? Eventual control? Control with a purpose. The rates in Palmetto's territory will stand a 15% increase. Can the people pay it? Where else will they get power? There's no competition. Bendig, I'd like to join you. If you mean that, I'll tell you how you can participate. I've taken an option on 50,000 shares of Delta Bond and Share at 20. What's the price of admission? You put up $500,000 and I'll give you 20% of Palmetto. I like it. Speak to again. Too bad, Mr. McDonald. We'll do better with Mansfield. Are you married, Mr. Bendick? Not yet. Then I'm sure you must have the pick of all the beauties in the North. Well, I'm afraid not. Perhaps because I'm too much interested in business. Oh, I'm sure one of them will change your mind. I might like that. The son of Mr. Bendick, let me see if I remember. For your two options, you want 20% of Palmetto back, a presidency in that company, and a seat on the board of directors of Delta. Your memory is perfect, Mr. Mansfield. And if I decline to yield, what grim alternative do Christa and I face? <laughs> Poverty? Despair? The most I can threaten you is that you'll have some concern. I've analyzed Palmetto's prospects, and after another year of operation, it will be eligible for additional franchises. Admirable, Randy. I wish my own industrial engineers had been as thorough. What do you think, Christa? Oh, you know how little I know about these things. I am prepared to make a counter-offer, Vendy. Cash settlement for your options. My options cost me $800,000. You can go ahead from there. Ahead, Mr. Vendy, ahead. Oddly enough, I was retreating. I'm standing fast. My figure is a million and a half. This is mine. 300,000. In full payment. That's wanton, Mr. Rendy, wanton. Besides, it's not yet yours, not until you endorse it. If I weren't your guest, Mr. Mansfield, I'd consider this an insult. But since I am, let me congratulate you on your sense of humor. I may not repeat the offer. I should hope not. $300,000, Rendy, is a lot of money to some people. Not to me. My nuisance value alone is higher than that. Your host, I will be glad to recall that it was you who used that term. I can't picture you as a nuisance, Mr. Bendig, under any circumstances. Mr. Mansfield, resident. It's Mr. Hilton calling from Atlanta. Yes, Hilton. <coughs> huh? Yes. What? A raid. A raid, you said? Yes. Good. All this old business. What? And I wanted so much to talk to you about New York, Mr. Bendig. Yes. I go up there next week for shopping. Of course, there's nothing I'd like better. Good. Thank you, Hilton. Oh, yes, and my compliments to Mr. Haskell. Meridian Telephone. Good night. What are you doing? Reducing a nuisance to what it is actually worth. A rimless zero. How can you talk that way to Mr. Bendig? It's very neat. A dead telephone, a dinner party. I uh, regret to tell you, Bendy, some southern pool of stock market gamblers 
I've raided Palmetto stock and torn a few gaps in Delta as well. So you rigged more than the telephone? They've hammered Palmetto down to two and Delta to 16. You don't seriously mean to pick up your option $3 million on stock that has a market value of $1.6 million. I see I have a great deal to learn. Yes. This is an expensive academy you come to for your first lesson. About you, I mean. May I use the telephone? The Haskell arranged it that it operates only on incoming calls. Are the trains still running north, or did you rig that too? No. Robert is waiting to take you to the station, where you must send a telegram of, uh, let us say, condolence. Are you sure you don't own the telegraph company as well? Uh, let me see. Oh, no, I don't. I made a present of that to Mrs. Mansfield. Remember, my boy, the next time you go hunting big game, don't use a cap pistol. Fetch up the heavy artillery or try from ambush. Thank you. I'll remember that. got that much money. Montgomery Trust? It'll be a little difficult, but uh, since I'm an important stockholder, they'll probably listen to me. You mean that? Yes. Mr. McDonald, there's only one way I can justify your confidence, and that is to bring off my part of the scheme. I have a couple of surprises, Mr. Mansfield, which should delight both you and the bank. You're going to be a smart operator, Andy. How about another outing next week? I'd like that. Oh, I have a friend who's coming into town, and likely my time will be pretty much taken up, but I'll try. I'll give you a ring, Mr. McDonald. Good evening, Mr. Fendi. Good evening. The lady's waiting for you. Third table on the left. Thank you, Sam. Good evening, Mr. Fendi. Good evening. Good evening, darling. The usual? Two champagne cocktails. Sorry I was so late. Keep you waiting long? A minute is too long. That's another thing I like about you. You make me feel so important. You are so important. I can't wait to be with you always. Darling. It was a little difficult getting away this time. There have been too many of these shopping trips. Buck doesn't care. No. It's just that he's so possessive. He wants me with him all the time. I don't blame him. I hate going home to him. I hate the thought that he might find out. Well, darling, you mustn't be afraid of him. Not afraid. I feel so guilty. But, darling, that's ridiculous. He can't hold on to you as though you were a piece of property he had bought. But I am. That's just it, I am. You're going to forget your whole life with him after we're married. Darling. I knew your strength from the first moment. That's what I hate. These speakeasies, hiding in corners. So do I. But we have to go slowly. Darling Buck's got me in such a tight spot. I know. McDonald has every cent he can raise behind me, but it's not enough. Buck keeps holding that stock down. The obvious thing would be for me to say that I can explain everything. Well, I can't. Not now. It's quite all right, dear. I think I understand. Susan. Krista, if you will excuse us for a moment. He'll probably make you pay someday because you saw this. I imagine this is no time for clever remarks. It had to happen. I'm just sorry you were here. It doesn't matter, darling.
home. What's the matter? You're beautiful, Krista. Turn on the light. No, please. Turn it on. I want to get up. Why did you wake me when I was finally able to sleep? I'll have a headache until morning. But sometimes you have utterly no consideration. Krista, darling. Please give me that medication. Don't hang over me. I don't want to be touched. Not even by me? I'm sorry, Krista. I love you so much that sometimes it just wears up in me. I can't control. You understand, don't you? Yes. I don't expect you to love me as much as I love you. How could you? And yet that's the very thing that frightens me. I want to build a cage around you. A cage of gold and precious stone. That's exactly what you've done. I've been in a cage ever since you bought me from my father, along with this land and the other chattels. Darling, what is it? I have offended you. No, you haven't offended me. You'd rather die than hurt my feelings. Yes. I know that. And you have a collection of French tapestries. You'd be ill if something happened to one of them. I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. I don't want to be a collector's item. <laughs> Darling, you're headache. Please, please go back to bed. No, because now I have the courage to tell you a lot of things. And I may not have it in the morning. You've nothing to tell me. I've educated you. I've surrounded you with love and luxury. I've given you everything. Not you! I knew I'd see it someday. I couldn't always guard me from it. Well, I have seen it, and I don't want to let it go. I'm leaving you. But only after. Not before. Yes. Is it someone I know? I think you know him very well. Just had the best of you in a business deal. Then. You're the one who betrayed me with that land deal. Buck, I can't transfer my affection and not my loyalty. Krista, can he love you more than I do? Can he give you more? <laughs> he can give me youth, life, the things I've needed. You know what he's like. You can reach up and pull his hair, and he laughs and fights back. <laughs> He's alive. He's like me. Do you think you can keep me now? Look. Look. Look at him now. <laughs> 